Welcome back, baby, to the Northern Steel Podcast, episode 40. Huge milestone. Can't believe we've done 40 episodes this year, Chris. And we're almost done with the NFL season. It's been a crazy ride. Honestly, a little, a very depressing ride through most of it. But we're here and we're alive, Chris. I can't believe it. We are alive. We've come a long way, Dom, and uh, it is a time like this that I would like to uh, have the audience direct their attention to the screen as we play our replay and memories. Hit it up, Dom. If you somehow missed last week's game, our third win in, a, in, a, in, a thir- in the win streak that the Steelers have, because mm-hmm. you're too busy sulking about uh, your tax evasion... We got the highlights for you. Starting off these highlights. We open up on these highlights, not with a Kenny Pickett sack, but with a jet sweep. Please, God, no. Wait, Gunner somehow blocks three Ravens players by himself and springs Jalen Warren for a huge gain into Ravens territory. But like most offensive drives, the Steelers cannot punch it in and will have to settle for a Chris Boswell field goal to put the Steelers up three to nothing from the three yard line. On the Ravens' first possession, they too find success early, with Dobbins getting his own big run after running all over the Steelers in their last matchup. Seems like both teams may just try to ground and pound here, but the Ravens also can't punch it in and have to settle for a field goal, making the score three to three with a little over 14 minutes left in the half. Later in this quarter, the Steelers have the ball. It's going to be third and five. Kenny rolls out to the right. He looks downfield and he finds Pat Fryermuth to the Ravens' 38-yard line to move the chains. Will this result in a touchdown, Chris? No, it doesn't result in a field goal either as Boz doinks it off the post. Now the Ravens have a chance to score before half and Dobbins gets another huge run. The Ravens utilize three players, so this should be easy to stop, but Dobbins is just built like that, I guess. And then after the most egregious, unsportsmanlike call I've ever seen on Cam Hayward, the Ravens have a first and goal and capitalize by throwing a touchdown with seven seconds left in the half. Huntley found Isaiah Likely, and it's likely I will be in anger management after witnessing the sequencing of events. Ravens go up top, 10-3, Seven seconds left in the half in a point where they shouldn't have scored a touchdown at all. Moving on to the second half, Huntley decided to start throwing to the only other playmaker on this team, Mark Andrews. Andrews was with already a couple catches in the first half. It's odd that we have no one covering him at all since the wide receivers don't play in this game, really. Uh, but who cares? And then on second and 25, Huntley finds, guess, can you guess? Can you even name a receiver on the team that isn't Mark Andrews? Of course not, and neither can Tyler Huntley. This sets the Ravens up for a 51-yard field goal for Justin Tucker, or as I like to call it, a chip shot for the GOAT, and the Ravens go up 13-3. Steelers ball now, and Najee says, F this, I'm tired of not scoring, and becomes possessed by a man who wants to win this game, picking up 15 yards on the carry. This will move us to a third and 14. It's time for George Pickens. If you didn't see the play, just know it's amazing. Like all of George Pickens' catches, GP disrespects his quarterback, and it's a first down. Now it's Boswell's turn for 50 yard, 51-yard field goal, and what I like to call, oh God, please make it, please. And he sneaks it in there to make the score 13 to six, Ravens on top. On the Ravens' next possession, look out, look out, look out for TJ Watt. Zach. Tying him with Jason Gilden for the third all-time in Steelers history. Steelers now have the ball in the fourth. Kenny escapes the pocket, rolls right, and finds GP for the easy first down. These highlights want to gloss over this impressive ADR drive with plays to Deontay and great runs by Najee and Jalen but that's probably because the Steelers fail to punch it in the end zone again and have to settle for three, bringing the score to 13-9 in the fourth. Now the Steelers have been clawing their way back, and all they need is to not give the Ravens good field position. Not, not give the Ravens 
Nah, I said, somebody tackle this man, please! And it's brought back to the Steelers' 40-yard line. Already in field goal range for the Ravens, but the Steelers' defense, it's stifling, making them lose yardage, then they had to punt. Momentum back for Pittsburgh, so what do they do with it? <laughs> That's right, you guessed it. They get sacked, maybe. <laughs> God, no. They are really going to need another great stop from their defense to have a chance this game. And that's exactly what they get. Steelers ball again, 2.30 left in the game. Can Kenny be clutch again? This is a good start as Kenny rolls to his left and finds Moose for a 20-yard completion. Next play at the 50, Kenny hikes the ball, steps back, and puts his entire nuts into this throw and threads the needle to Steven Sims, just missing Kyle Hamilton's hands by inches. Who won on Kyle Hamilton? Not me. Don't fact check that. Now third and eight with a minute left to go in the game. <laughs> Kenny drifts right, evades the sack, throws it on the run and finds Najee Harris for the go-ahead touchdown. Are you kidding me? Back-to-back -back weeks for Kenny Clutch. Najee sealing his best game as a stealer with that grab and grabbing a Ravens towel out of the stands as well. This could do it. This can keep their playoff hopes alive. Somehow, some way, this team that it was two and six is still here competing in meaningful games. The Steelers just need to make sure that the Ravens don't get into field goal range. And which could be, you know, the 50 yard line for Justin Tucker. Who knows? And Huntley throws it to Steelers MVP Minka Fitzpatrick for his sixth pick of the year. Another comeback win, another Ravens loss. And the Steelers are alive. Wow. Ooh. I I don't know what to say, man. It's uh <laughs> it's been a ride. It's been an absolute roller coaster. Uh if if we look back literally a month ago, maybe even three weeks ago, maybe even last week, we're like, all right, season's done. Let's pack our bags, whatever. I obviously don't want to see a losing season. It's going to happen. And now look at what's going on. We're 8-8 we're eight and eight with one game left against the Browns. We're, we're, we're making plays. We're having these great fourth quarter comebacks. Kenny's playing great with those fourth quarter comebacks. Najee's on fire, which is awesome. You know, I this is exciting. And so now this 1% chance is... Becoming a lot more likely. I don't know. Yeah, let's put let's put this game. Let's let's talk about some little details in this game and put it in perspective. Sure. Yes, the yeah, Steelers yeah. did not. Yes, the Steelers did not score a touchdown until the end when they had to. Um, I'm a little worried that with this win streak, they're going to keep Matt Canada. I don't think you can. I think there is reasons why we're not scoring. I think his play calling, the the schemes that the plays are ran, are bad. They don't work. I think you, you need to move on from him. And the only time we've been scoring touchdowns is you let Kenny loose it a little bit. Now, to be fair, the running game was great in this in this game. Najee ran the ball so well. Uh, first 100-yard rush of the Ravens have led up this year. Jalen Warren ran the ball well, like he usually does. Kenny Pickett didn't really get a chance to throw a ball. I mean, every the, every offensive series besides like the last couple was run, run, pass, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. Very predictable. Very easy to stop to be honest. So I'm hoping this, these last two games can help bring some confidence to Kenny and to, it, come on, Canada, put some confidence in your quarterback, please. Let him throw the ball a little bit more. Uh, but I do like the confidence that Najee has. He's running with aggression. He's running fast and hard. And then I think you want to talk about this more, but you and I are both not big believers in Mark Robinson. And Mark Robinson had a big role in this game. And it was nice to see. Oh, for sure. Uh, Mark Robinson has been coming in and, and getting some playing time finally after spending about the three quarters of the whole year on the inactive list. Uh, and yeah, he's definitely played his part. The thing that I feel like we've been missing a lot of, especially with our linebackers, are the backers that can really shoot the gaps and stop the run. I think Mark Robinson does that. He puts his head down and he just really shoots the gaps and he gets in there. And that's something that we've really been needing and that's something that I've seen the last couple of weeks, which has been really nice. Yes. Uh, so hat, hats off to Mark Robinson on that. I've, I've really enjoyed watching 
him play and get some play time. I think there's still a lot of coaching that can be done for Mark Robinson, but he's young. So let's see maybe how he develops in the you know coming coming of years. And what that means for the linebacker core on the Steelers, not sure yet, but it will be something that we discuss potentially next week. If next week becomes our last podcast of the season, spoiler alert, we'll get more into that later. Um, but yes, the defense, they, we, we talked about last week, the main goal of the game against the Ravens was stopping the run because Huntley was playing and they little up 200 yards rushing the last time they played the Ravens and they did their part this time. They really shut down the run. Yes, Dobbins had some bigger runs, but I thought they did a really good job, especially when it mattered most. The highlights didn't show up, but there's there are two drives at the end there. One where the where the Ravens returned that field goal back, where the Steelers actually pushed them backwards, stopped them, moved them out of field goal range. Then after Kenny's sack late in the fourth, the Ravens got the ball back, and it was three straight plays of just getting stuffed. Didn't he didn't even get a chance. Where if you remember back in the first ma- matchup, even though Mitch threw all those interceptions and we were just really struggling, we still had a chance to win that game. And we just needed one defensive stop to get the ball back, and we couldn't do it. So mm-hmm. I thought that was really nice to see, especially considering the opponent we're playing coming up. Yeah, we. I think we're a completely different team than how we started. Um, and I think we've continued to grow. There's a lot of uh, you know, young players on this roster, and uh, it's, it's just kind of been exciting. Now, this... This transition that we've been been on, and, and the players that we've been able to get involved, uh, hopefully we can uh, carry this momentum going into next week. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think everyone's playing at a good level, and you can definitely see a lot of improvement. Uh, I just want to state it back to when you were talking about Matt Canada and everything on how he can't stay. I totally agree with you. I don't necessarily think our success and wins will keep him around just because, you know, I guess as an offensive coordinator's job, you know, you, you look at the numbers and we're like, you know, pretty far down as far as like passing yards per game, you know, as scoring, we're definitely not up there. Our scoring has been abysmal this whole season, minus like right. a span of four weeks, maybe. Right. Uh, but, you know, we, we need someone new in there. We need someone creative and clever. We met Canada, you know, he he tried his best, but his best was not good enough. So what was it? Steve Smith Sr. said he's like he's playing Saturday uh football or something yes. like that. And I and I think yes. that's very accurate. I think Canada would be a lot better suited in a college uh you know facility like he used to be. Um so yep, out with the old in with the new. I I, I think we'll be seeing a new offensive coordinator for the Steelers. I hope so, and I think that'll be part of our off-season discussion in the next couple of weeks here, depending on when our last episode will be. Um, so this is a great win, obviously. It's exciting to see. Moving on, we're headed. We're going for another win, of course. We always like to see wins, but before that happened, on Monday night this past week was a game against the Bills and the Bengals. Uh, an unfortunate situation happened. It was very scary. It was very... Uh, hard to watch. And Damar Hamlin, safety, defensive back for the Buffalo Bills, uh, was in a routine. It was in a tackle. Uh, he was trying to make a tackle on T. Higgins. Something happened. Not really sure the exact metal cool things. You know, well, everyone has their own stuff. I don't know if they've released the exact metal thing, but he went to cardiac arrest. Uh, they had to bring the ambulance onto the field. They had to administer CPR. And bring him to the hospital, and it was uh, very scary. And I, 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 the only reason why we're just bringing this up now is because, luckily, today Thursday, we got some really good news about Demar. His um, neurological signs are great. His vitals have stabilized to normal. He opened his eyes. He's able to uh, squeeze his loved one's hands. He still has a breathing tube in to help him breathe, but he's able to write and communicate with the doctors. And it is a complete. Complete uh, blessing and change from where this was around 72 hours ago. So, 
the reason why I just made this up is because that was so scary, Chris. You and I were really discussing if we should even do the podcast this week. We're so happy that he's okay. Um, but it's so terrifying because in, in something that we love so much as a fans and in a game that people love to play, how dangerous and uh, scary this sport can really be. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I was just going to say, let's just say what it is. You know, it's a miracle that he is where he's at today because, you know, a couple of days ago, we, we had no idea what the prognosis of uh, DeMar would be. And uh, it's really tough. And, you know, at times like this, we realize that it's it's bigger than football. You know, I know. Uh, it, and it was really encouraging to see, you know, going through media uh, you know, and everything, it seems like everyone is basically on the same boat. Obviously there's those few people, but you know, it, it really seemed like this was something that brought the football community together and, uh, had us all look at the bigger picture, right? You know, uh, these, these men go out on the field every single Sunday or Monday or Thursday, uh, every week and they, they put their lives on the line. You don't really realize it. Um, but you know, they go out there and they give it their all. Uh, and what DeMar what happened to DeMar was uh, truly sad, but it is a miracle that he is alive and recovering today. Uh, he was, he, what, they had to do CPR for 10 minutes. Uh, you know, like that's, that's a long time to not have a pulse or to be breathing. And the fact that he is where he's at today uh, is a miracle. So thank God for that one. Um, hopefully he continues his recovery. Our hearts, thoughts, and prayers go to him and his family. Um also, one more cool thing that I saw on there is, uh, if you don't know, Damar has a, I think it's like a toy foundation. Like he raises money to uh, get toys for young children. Um, and his original goal was $2,500. Uh, well, people have found his charity and he has now raised uh, $5.5 million, which is really incredible. So good to the people out there. Let's keep our thoughts and prayers for Damar and his family uh, and, and pray for a speedy recovery. So um, well said, Chris. Well said. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with the Bengals and Bills game. Doesn't really matter. What all also mattered was Damar's health and in our opinions, a lot of people's opinions, and very happy to hear that it is improving and it's getting better and better each day that passes. So moving on to this week. The Steelers play the Cleveland Browns at home for the last game of the regular season. They can still make the playoffs, Chris. Here's how. The Bills have to beat the Patriots, and the Jets have to beat the Dolphins, and the Steelers need to beat the Browns. Now, ignoring the Monday night game that didn't happen, uh, I, I don't know where the Bills are at, or I guess not ignoring it. That was the right word. Um, in, I guess in light of the game that didn't happen on Monday or that got canceled on Monday, I'm not sure where the bear or the, where the Bills mental um, mental health is at right now. That is important. I, I hope they get well, but um, I also feel like with this good news coming today, they're inspired. They're ready to play. They are probably going to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, well, uh, like devout this season. <laughs> sort of look over here. Um. Oh. Um. Well, not God. Now I can think of it. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna dedicate the season to Demar. I'm sure. Um. So I we think are, we I are think educated. Will, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think they're gonna rest their players. Um. You know. And we're just talking logistics here. I think they, they, they will probably try to win the game because I don't know if the uh, the Bills and Bengals game will even happen. So I'm sure they're going to try to play that one. The Dolphins, Tua, still potentially the concussion protocol. Not really sure what's going to happen there. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater sounds like he's not playing. So it'll be Skyler Thompson against the Jets. The Jets want to beat them, so never should happen. So now we're up. Us against the Browns, that's what matters. Even if we don't make the playoffs, Chris, I would still like to end on a high note and get that win. It seems like we're finally finding some footing, something to build on for next year, and let's keep that train rolling. Oh, I totally agree. I mean, like, would would a higher draft pick be nice? Yes, but I guess I'd rather see progression and improvement in this young team. And, like, if we can carry that into next season, going with, like, going into the 2023 season, 
as hot as we are leaving it, like I'll feel pretty good. You know, we get a few added pieces, some new coaching, things like that. Who's to say that we can't, you know, compete with the big dogs next year. So, um, yeah, I totally agree. I, I'm not I, hopeful for the playoffs personally, but I do want to win. I do want to end on a winning note. Yeah, I mean, they'll probably end up going the same same way. But, you know, if we do make it, we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it. But right now, let's talk about our match with the Browns in Chris's favorite segment. Take it away. Keys to the game. There it is. There it is, Chris. There Keys to the game is. usually the same every week. What do you got for me? <laughs> All right. Well... Uh, I'm going to switch it up a little bit because I think this is a very important week. I think this is a uh, an obvious must win for us. So we got to pull out all the stops, right? And I mean all of them. So what we're going to do is we got to distract Deshaun Watson. So I'm talking get the tables out there, get God. the. Oh, oh, I mean, <laughs> get the massage have a whole oil. section. Yeah, get everything, man. Get the scented maybe play candles. Some, maybe, maybe play some of that, like, mandolin in the back. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> just, oh, God. Just some, some kind of peaceful music. Light some candles. Uh, we're pulling out all the stops, all right? But you know what? Nah, here's what we got to do. We need to uh, basically do the same thing that we did against the Ravens, I think. I. Uh, and first off, we controlled a lot of that game by running the ball. Najee is coming off of his best performance of the year, uh, maybe even of his career. So we got to keep that going. We had a great one-two punch with him and Warren. Warren had some a lot of great runs in there. Uh, Najee playing amazing. We just got to keep that up and keep that firing. Uh, if anything, maybe we got to start opening up uh, some play action. I know that um, because of our play style we only had one play action pass last week it might have been a good time to introduce that a little bit more but you know what we came away with the win so i'm not going to be too upset about that um so yeah let's keep running the ball uh let's get moved down the field uh another key to the game for me is uh actually scoring a touchdown rather than settling for field goals uh i'm not going to put too much emphasis on that because that's been a key to this whole damn year uh, but uh, always got to say it. Always got to say what I what I hope for. Uh, and then obviously just uh, you know neutralizing their run game. Deshaun Watson has been playing lights out by any means. I mean, last week was his best performance with you know three touchdowns, but he also didn't complete that many passes. So I'm not too worried about him. However, uh, Cleveland has a good rushing attack. They they have for a long time now. Nick Chubb is uh, no person to you know, forget about. Uh, so he's really good uh, running back, and we really just got to stay on top of that and, and neutralize the run game. Uh, yeah, I I, I agree. I, I do think, along with your just running the ball, I almost feel like we need to open up the passing more. I think it takes us too yeah. long to, to get Kenny passing. I think you need to have your confidence. He's done what he has had to do in the past couple of games. Start passing the ball a bit more. Um the uh, Browns offense has not been playing well since Deshaun's been back in. Nick Chubb hasn't gotten over 100 yards. Deshaun's not uh, lighting it up either. But they, on paper, have a far superior offense than the Ravens do without Lamar. I mean, Deshaun Watson should be a better quarterback. Nick Chubb is a great running back. They have way better receivers. Amari Cooper lit us up last time. Nick David Njoku lit us up last time. Donovan Peoples-Jones can make people miss. He's a speedy guy. So you got to be on your P's and Q's, okay? The defense has got to come out. Fast, they gotta come out hard. They gotta impose their will on this team. The biggest obstacle in the way here. Now the Steelers just faced a hard defense in the Ravens. Ravens have a top ten defense in the league, but the Browns defense, who hasn't been, who are not statistically good, have been really, really good since Deshaun Watson has come back. Unfortunately, they have scored uh, three defensive touchdowns. They've had a special teams return touchdown. They have at least one takeaway in every single game, multiple picks, multiple sacks every game, at least two to three in every game they played. The defense is playing very, very, very good. And that is the biggest key to watch out for this game. The thing that could really tear us apart is how the defense is playing. Now, of course, we would all love to finish out this year strong, uh, beat them by 40. That'd be awesome. 
but their defense is playing really well. So it was probably going to be another close one, folks. As always, week in, week out, that's Steelers football, man. So before we go on to our very last game picks of the year, uh, I want to say that uh, if we don't make the playoffs, it's been fun doing this for the first time this year. Doing a podcast every week with you guys and, and having people listen. And Chris and I have said that when the season ends for the Steelers, we will be taking a break until the week before free agency starts for the offseason. Uh, we do love football. We'll be watching the playoffs. We'll watch the Super Bowl. But, you know, our passion is talking about the Steelers. We're not going to sit here and talk an hour about all the other playoff games or even sit here January and February and speculate offseason moves until they actually happen. Um, and we can also wrap that all up, all those offseason moves for those two months in one podcast <laughs> in March. So when the season's mm-hmm. over, that will be our last podcast, potentially could be next week. And then we will see you guys in March if we continue this. If you guys would like to see us continue this or hear us or however you <laughs> uh, consume this podcast. Uh, so let's do our final game picks of the year, Chris. Chris is up 161 to 160. So it all comes down to this. <laughs> Ooh, and we don't have a punishment for who loses because we never got to it. I might post about it, but who will answer? Probably no one. I, I think you, what Chris, what I'll do is I will uh, think of two to three options. And I can post about it. People can vote on it. But I'm going to pick like two to three options we can do. I'm not going to. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to have someone uh, decide because we don't have enough listeners for that, unfortunately. <laughs> so. I'll just, uh, I'll give some options out there of stuff we could do. Okay, you ready? Yep. Chiefs at Raiders. Chiefs. Chiefs. Titans at Jags for the division. Uh, Jaguars, easy dubs. Jaguars, Duval, baby. I want to see them in the playoffs. I really do. <laughs> I do too. Browns at Steelers. Steelers, ain't no other way. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Browns is the Browns. Am I right? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Ravens at Bengals. Bengals. Yeah, I think because of the Monday game being uh, canceled, and rightfully so, uh, the, the Bengals still have to win this game to secure the AFC North division because they don't know if they're going to play that other game or not. So they will be playing this with their all their starters, and I say Bengals win. Vikings at Bears. Vikings. I don't know why I thought no, about that. <laughs> no Justin Fields, no win for the Bears. Vikings. Patriots at Bills. Bills. I said Bills, just kind of like how I touched on earlier. Same reason why they need to keep playing this game. Jets at Dolphins. J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Are you actually going with Jets? I am going with Jets. I'm, uh, I'm changed my mind. I changed it uh, with mom's picks. I'm doing it. Dang. Okay. Yeah. I'm going with Jets too. Uh, Skyler Thompson, third string quarterback against a very good defense. Even though the Jets offense is booty, uh, it's, that's, I think they can pull it off and hopefully they do. Buccaneers at Falcons. Buccaneers. I'm going to go Falcons here. Buccaneers secured their playoff spot at number four. They're not even close to moving up in the seating. I, there's no reason for them to play. I think they rest. That is true. However, I did read an article today that uh, Bulls said, we're playing them because we have not been playing well and we have stuff to work on. So you said, yeah, unless sure. something changes... Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, Tom Brady at uh, Tom Brady at fifty years old is going to play a game that doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. Tom Brady could use the practice, man. <laughs> uh, this year he could. Panthers at Saints. Panthers. Yeah, in a game that doesn't matter, I'll go Saints at, at home. Texans at Colts. Give me. Uh, the Texans, please. Yeah, give me the Texans as well. 
And I think both of us are picking Texas because we're trying to manifest something with the Texans winning and the Bears losing so that the Steelers get the 32nd overall pick in the draft. That'd be really great. That'd be wonderful. Basically a first round pick for Chase Claypool. I'll take it. Cardinals at 49ers. 49ers. Yeah, they got something to play for. So they, they got to keep their seeding. They just moved into the second seed. Cowboys at Commanders. Just because I want to see the fall of the Cowboys, I hope the Commanders, but like I'm going to go Cowboys. Commanders are starting Sam Howell this week after being eliminated. Cowboys can actually still win their division. So, Cowboys. The best rookie quarterback in the draft. <laughs> Rams at Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks. Geno Smith, baby, make that playoff. Seahawks need to win to keep the playoff hopes alive. I pick Seahawks. Giants at Eagles. Eagles, because they need to win. They do. Uh, the Giants are locked into their number six spot in the seeding. They're probably going to rest their players, even though the coach said they aren't. But why would you risk playing the top seed in the division just to get injured? I say they rest. Eagles need to win to secure the, the number one spot. Eagles win that one. Chargers at yeah. Broncos. Uh, so I, you know what? I'll stick with the one I said before. Um, I'll say Chargers. I know that it's like going to be a game time decision and there's some things that, uh, could happen, whether or not Chargers are going to be playing their spot. But I'm going to say Chargers. Basically what Chris is trying to say is that if the Ravens and Bengals, if the Bengals win that game at noon, the Chargers will most likely rest because they'll be locked into their number fifth seating. So I'm picking the Broncos because I think the Bengals will win. And the Chargers will rest their players. And then Sunday Night Football, Lions at Packers. I need the Lions to win. I'm going for the Lions. <laughs> I do not want the Packers in the playoffs. We deal with Packer fans all the time. And you know what? I They, they just need to not happen. They go, they go Lions. I'm all for it. I need the Lions to win as well, but I'm picking the Packers in Lambeau in January. Tough to tough not to pick them, but I hope the Lions win. Uh, and that will be the end of our picks. Looks like we had like four different. So it's going to come down to the wire, mm-hmm. Chris. We'll see what happens. Uh, thank you for listening to the Northern Steel podcast this year. Uh, we really appreciate it. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and um uh, Devon DeJornos.com. Uh, Chris, you have any words left to say? You know, in a moment like this, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to all of you and say, Go Steelers. I love when you say something different. All right. Peace. Peace out. <laughs>